uh, fellas, I there's a thing called Godwin's Law, which is the longer an online discussion goes on, the higher the probability that somebody will call somebody else a Nazi or Hitler. And so it follows in an Irish football conversation, the longer it goes on, the more likely that Saipan or Roy Keane will come up. And <laughs> Paki, there is the famous photo and the goalkeepers, not that the goalkeepers, um, yeah. kerfuffle was the main uh, issue I know, but there's the famous photo where Roy's throwing a bottle of water, camera, camera's in the right place, you're in the wrong place, it looks like all hell's breaking loose. Uh, so you're the goalkeeping coach that was, was giving the lad the day off. <laughs> well, actually, you know, uh, I got to blame for, for that initially, but what happened was, and, and just sorry to, to, to kind of put the photograph into context, there was one photographer there uh, and the rest of it, there was nobody else from the media there apart from one photographer, and they took the photograph, and in fact, the bottle is going in the opposite direction away from me, but it looks like he's throwing it at me, so, so that's the context <laughs> of the photograph. Uh, but but really what happened was, if you can remember, say, Pan Shade was incredible, it warmed down there, and it was kind of almost like a, a, an r and because we were there to almost get ourselves relaxed before uh, going out there. But I, I've got to blame Shay actually, for, for Roy, for Roy. News to me, I've got to blame, is news to me. I've got to blame everything on Shay because when we were heading uh, out to Saipan, we were in Amsterdam Airport, and you, you remember that uh, skit that he, was it Today FM that they used to do Roy Radio or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I was in uh, whatever yeah. it was, anyway. And Shay had it on his laptop, and, and I remember him playing it, and all the boys gathering around and having a real fun. And you could hear kind of almost Roy's voice. And Roy was sitting up about 20 yards away reading the book, and you could see the steam coming out of his ears. So it was him that started Roy in a bad place, I've got to say. Uh, but <laughs> Saipan, going back to Saipan, we, I, I decided I wanted to keep Shay and Dean Kelly and Alan. And I wanted to keep them sharp. You know, even though it was R&R &R and we weren't really into our training process yet, I wanted to keep them. So I asked them, would they go down a little bit earlier? Because Mick and, and, and Taff was down setting up. And Ian Evans was going to do this sort of shooting exercise, if you remember, Shay. And it was, he wanted to get into it fairly quickly. So I took them down a bit earlier, got into a bit of training and worked them quite hard as I normally did. And then uh, the bus came and the players came off and... and Ian Evans went into a shooting exercise. And at the end of it, Alan Kelly came to me and said, listen, we're, we're absolutely done in here. Can we step out of the five-a-side game that Mick always had? And that was the moment then that Roy kind of lost it a little bit because he wanted the goalkeepers to play in the five-a-side. And he, and he was on to me. And I said, Roy, they're, they're done. And, and they went down to the, to the tent, remember, to get a little bit of hydration on. And then the, the five-a-side was over. And that's when Roy walked down uh, to me and he started giving out again about the goalkeepers not playing in the five-a-side. And I, I was getting up getting the balls. I say, Shh, Roy, forget it, forget it. And uh, I, I didn't see, by the way, the next part of it. And the next goalkeeper I blame is Alan Kelly, because Alan Kelly apparently had a bit of a go with him in the tent. She, you might have been around when he did have a go <laughs> and said that he would take him out there. And, you know, you don't mess with goalkeepers, Joe. You know, <laughs> we're, we're all in this together. If any of the players mess with us, we, we say, hey, hey, you're going to get done in here. If you, if, you, if you keep it up. So I think Alan had a few words with him. And that was as far as I knew that happened. And it was only when they went back up to the media and Mick was having his press conference that uh, the, the young lad now, he's actually no longer what is a uh, young lad. Uh, he passed away last year, unfortunately, and he was working for Sky. And uh, he asked our, our press officer, another uh, gentleman who's no longer what is, uh, was there a bit of a set to with Packy and Roy down there? And our press uh, officer, instead of him saying, no, no, everything's fine, he said, oh, Jesus, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, we're at it. Full, full help down there. <laughs> so so that was what the Sky reported wa wanted. And he, next thing then, it was on Sky that me and him had fallen out. And my God, the whole thing took off from there. And it was only next morning because there was this delay of eight hours yeah. uh, that, that I picked up on the following morning, Joe, to say that, this big sort of news story had broke over in, in Ireland. And uh, I think Eamon Dunphy said, I should be the one that's coming home, not not Roy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, that's kind of where it all started. And can I just say to you that the, the other part of it was, I came down for breakfast that following morning and everybody had left bar two people. And they were sitting down having breakfast and it was Alan Kelly and Roy. And they were sitting at the same table having a breakfast. And I sat down beside them and I said, I said to Roy, I said, my God, did you see what's going on back in Ireland? The, me and you supposed to, And he said, oh, I don't mind the press. Don't mind the media. You know what they're like. 
and the three of us had breakfast together. So, so that's how bad it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but these things happened. And then, of course, the whole thing kicked on further then with Mick McCarthy and him and, and so on, you know. So yeah, yeah. that's the real story behind it, Joe. Okay, well, that was much ado about nothing. I suspect those arguments happen Absolutely. every week on a train gun. I mean, the real scandal there, I didn't realise that Shea Given from Amsterdam Airport was baiting Roy Keane from uh, across the room <laughs> by playing. I mean, that's, that's the real revelation here. That's the root cause of this whole thing. <laughs> it's funny, Joe, because you mentioned Roy Keane, and it's, uh, he, he lives in Manchester as well. So I was like, ask me a question, Roy Keane, the whole thing shut down. I, was like, I thought he was at the door. I thought he was at the door or something. I started looking at the curtains. Uh, <laughs> But no, I remember that thing that I think was gift grub or something, you know, like when That's people right. still, used to do still like still going the, strong, the by the way. It's still going very strong. Oh, it's yeah. still going, is it? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I think it was Roy Keane, he didn't get paid or something. And he's on the phone to Manchester at the uh, Alex Ferguson on, on the thing. Hmm. And it was funny, I was at the Cork accident and the Scottish accident and they're having a go at each other and, and had the guys in stitches at the airport, like and there's this package says Roy was like sort of death staring over what why, why are they even laughing for <laughs> but to be fair to Roy Roy listened to it after that so I brought it over to him and, oh, and he had he a listen right? yeah he did yeah he goes oh let me hear that so he was <laughs> laughing at himself or the guys you know taking the mickey or whatever and he's no but the side pan thing yeah as Packy says it's, it's it's something we couldn't change it's happened we, we dealt yeah. with it and, and we moved on um, I, I would nearly say it sort of galvanised us a little bit as a team I know Packy was on the, on the, on the coaching side but you know, this is my first World Cup. I spoke about earlier in the show about supporting Packy at the World Cup and, and as a fan. And, and when I played for Ireland, I was a fan still. You know, I was, I was playing, but I was a fan. And nothing was going to take away from, from me playing for Ireland in a mm. World Cup. It was just, you know, dream come true stuff. Yeah, it overshadowed a bit, the, the, the build-up. But once that first game kicked off, it was, it was just amazing. They stand there, the national anthem. And, and we talk about Japan and so many thousand miles away from Ireland. We walked out, the Irish flags were, were everywhere. You know, just amazed how many people made the journey. And, mm. you know, great, great, great memories. We were unlucky against Spain in the end. Um, I, didn't, I didn't have the Timofti moment like, like Packy did and, and saved that amazing <laughs> penalty save. You know, I just, that's probably one of the biggest regrets I had. 